break. Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Welcome to the next episode of Bergeron Briefs. As you know, this is a series that uh, I've been doing for quite a while now. My name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 56 of us now. There are a lot of lawyers at Myrick O'Connell. I'm the person that does elder law. And the per reason why we started doing Bergeron Briefs several years ago was to allow us to have more in-depth conversations with folks regarding particular issues that I really can't cover in the seminars that I usually do with the Council on Aging. And one of those issues um, often is about ambulances and what happens when the ambulance shows up at your house and wh what is the procedure and how does all that work. And I'm specifically talking about that today because I'm doing a, a series of interviews with people around the so-called MOLST form, uh, Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment. Um, that's kind of like what you always thought of as the DNR, the Do Not Resuscitate form. And I wanted to talk about, from a practical perspective, how these folks deal with all that jazz. Um, uh, so here to, to uh, j joining me is Dave Walton from Patriot Ambulance. And uh, Dave, we have known each other for ages and ages. And his chief of operations... Don McGinnis. Don McGinnis. Recently married, but she's got a different last name. <laughs> Eventually. Not yet. Oh, so we don't have to remember two names here? No, oh, good. Don McGinnis. Oh, good. So th and thank you very much for coming. It's a uh, so there. before we start, can you just give me a little bit of background, David? Now, I, by the way, I know David, and for those of you who are from the Hudson Marlboro area, D David, now he's going to blush. David is probably the, the, one of the most dedicated citizens in Marlboro and Hudson, in terms of his support in the, in the organization's support to the community, is notorious. So you just ask anybody. But that's not what we're talking about today. <clears throat> we are talking about Patriot Ambulance. So what are you doing in the ambulance business? Were you always an ambulance guy? I was been in the ambulance business for 36 years. 30, Prior to oh, that, oh, okay. I, uh, my partner and I were both firefighters in the town of Concord. In the town of Concord. In the town of Concord. So where, you, where you still live, right? Where, where I still live. We, although we keep but trying to get you to Mar move. Marlboro and Hudson. Your home is out here. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, still live. It's actually West Concord. So, so, some people it's think not it's the different. same. But anyway. And so you, uh, so you so started So we decided to do something more than uh, be firefighters. We were on the ambulance for eight years, so we yeah. understood the 911 system. Yeah. Uh, started with one ambulance in 1979. Eventually left the fire department after we were awarded our first emergency 911 contract. Mm -hmm. uh, we get along well with most of the fire departments, police departments, because we understand their system. Uh, and then we expanded to approximately 27 ambulances. We have 27 ambulances. 27 ambulances, uh, eight wheelchair vans. At one point, we had 350 employees. We're down to about 200, because sometimes bigger is not better. A mere 200. A but mere you've had the experience employees. with being big, and now you're, <laughs> yeah. now you're at a comfortable, yeah. now you're where comfortable you want to be. Level. Yeah. And uh, that's what, what sparked it all, was being on the ambulance and uh, dealing with people. That's great. And, and Dawn, how did you end up in this business? Um, it started from church, believe it or not. From church. Yes, I saw they were doing a CPR program, inviting people to take CPR for free. Yeah. I spoke with the local fire department. They were putting it on for them. Yeah. I got CPR certified. They said, hey, you should get your EMT. And from there, it just blossomed. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. That's a great story. How long have you been with Patriot Ambulance? About 10 years now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a long time. Yeah, a long time. So both of you have got a lot of experience with all of this stuff. Yeah. So I guess what, I, what I'd be interested from both of your perspectives is, so you're in the ambulance and you get the call, right? And mm -hmm. you go to a person. And, and by the way, my, and my clients, I know that this can affect everybody, but my clients are mostly older folks, mm -hmm. right? So they're folks who, with whom we are talking a lot about making sure that they have figured out how they want to be treated especially if they're incapacitated, mm -hmm. right? So they can't be kind of making the decisions mm -hmm. on their own, right? So, so tell me about that situation. You get a call, and the call is, there's an emergency, we have to go to this place. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about kind of what happens from there and what happens if you walk in the door mm -hmm. and someone's on the floor? Okay, so uh, yeah, obviously we get the, uh, the tone uh, to respond. Yeah. Uh, we respond with police and fire department. 
Police and fire. Police and fire. And why does the why, why do both always go? By the way, I'm going to uh, ask you some trivia questions because I get to find out about all this stuff. That's why I love doing these interviews. Uh, we we all work as a team. It's yeah. it's it's it can't work without a team effort. Um, you know, the police go for numerous reasons: um, control, uh, get the story. Sometimes they're there before we are. They get to see what's happening. They get yeah. to put together the scene, put together information for us. Um, any see. anything, any need for their services at the time. Um, by, by the way, sometimes yeah, and then sometimes the fire truck comes, and, and people department. say, "Well, why is the fire truck there?" Oh, right? certainly, uh, and and sometimes they get there before us too. It's it's it depends on locations of where the calls are. Yeah. Um, does, regardless of who gets there first, yeah. they're all first aid trained, I and see. fire department are obviously uh, trained at an advanced level. Um, they have equipment. Uh, if they get there first, patient gets treated first from from the fire department. They work as you know EMTs. Yeah. Um, you know e the police the police cruisers they have first aid equipment you know and defibrillators. So it's it's a a, a nice rounded effect of everybody working together. Um, yeah. Who's to say a cardiac arrest doesn't turn into because there was a fire downstairs and they stood up and they had a cardiac event and there's still a fire downstairs so right. um, and, and, and the same and, with and the I and I remember hearing that one of the issues with fire was that that the fire department is the uh, they're the only people that if you can't get in the door they can go through the door yeah, exactly. right? whereas Absolutely. the police really Absolutely. can't without Access. a warrant or whatever so yeah. and you're certainly not going through the, through and the door, right the smaller people we try to throw Those, <laughs> so when you get there right <laughs> And so there's and there's someone on the floor. If one of those other first responders has gotten there first, mm -hmm. what then what is your role? Do they pass it off to you at that point? Yeah, they'll give us the information as we all sort of get our equipment together. Um, you know, on our trucks we're paramedics, so we have advanced equipment. Yeah. Um, we take a look at what they've gotten for vital signs or what they have for information. Absorb that. Get our equipment going at the same yeah. time, and then it's a transfer of care. I get it. I get it. So now you're there, and you're there with the person that is on the floor and who is unconscious. Right. And and so what do you do then? Are are you are you really looking around for information regarding what to do with this with this person? Uh, again, that, that that's also the team effort. For on our on our aspect of things, um, we're taking in the scene. We're yeah. taking in what actually happened, what the family may or may not be saying. The fire department will get will ask questions to the family or anybody who might have been there. Same with the police department. Um, we are are sort of focused on patient care. Uh, we we do need to know what has happened to this person. Why are why have they gotten to the floor? Um, and then we go through a, a, a series of protocols in our head. So is this a cardiac event? We take vital signs. We try and figure out the cause of being on the floor so we can treat that cause. I see. I see. 